And so here's what I'm going to do. First off, if you've done everything right, if I go to File and I have to go to Open, I will have some drawing files. But when I go and open up a drawing template, if you've done it right, you have an imperial template and you have a border template. And a lot of you guys were working on the border yesterday. When I open my border up, uh, one second. When I open up my border, it ends up looking like that. Now, where is 0, 0? 0, 0 should be right down here in the corner. Where is 11, 8 and a half? It's probably going to be right up here past the border. Why is it up that high? So if you go and put it in a book and you punch holes in, it'll actually fit and you don't have the top cover the border covered up. The reason or the question somebody asked me yesterday is why are there all these spots? Well, one, there's always got to be a title. What is it for? And this could be one drawing of 200 drawings. Right? Another one's probably going to have a name. Who drew it? A date when it was drawn. A scale. Is it 1 to 1 or is it 1 to 2 or 1 to 100? You know? And then it's like, well, there's a blank one here. Yeah, that's because I guess I could put mark in there and it's the mark I give you. Or it could be it was checked by somebody else to make sure it was right and somebody puts their name in there to say yes it was checked by me and it's right so there's sometimes you'll see these drawings and they have a whole bunch of spots in them and they're all for certain steps based on the company and the procedures that are going on with what it's doing i'm pretty sure that if you're at nasa and there's a drawing there's gonna be more than one person that looks at the drawing i bet you be five or six engineers that may go through it and make sure triple check quadruple check that it is right but that's what the title block is for. Now, once you have this one done, you're going to actually start drawing things. And this is the whole point of doing the drawings is so that you understand the basic commands. So the one assignment is just trim, fillets, copies, offsets. The next one, which if I open up, and I'll just go to the website, from the website, I click on, you know, it's assignment number four, gasket number one, and I've got it open already, and here it is. And basically, it's assignment four, and as you read down it, it will tell you where to start, what we want, I want you to name it. It will tell you what different commands, like linear radius and diameter for dimensions, and it has the final result there. If it doesn't look like that, I'm taking marks off for everything that's not right. So if you miss a dimension, it's one mark off. If you have the wrong side, wrong size on one of the things, it's one mark off. And it just keeps going down from there. Now, my point right now of this demo is to show you how to do this quickly, right? And when you look here, it says you need to figure out what commands to use and the order you will use them to reproduce the drawing. You should have about 10 to 15 commands in total that are needed. So you only really need to do 10 or 15 things to actually do this, right? So one of the commands I suggest you use down here at the bottom is mirror, right? And mirroring is really handy. If you have something that's identical, why would you redraw two halves of it if there's two identical halves? Right? So basically, I would draw half of it and then go whoop, mirror it over, and I'm done. In this case, when you look at this thing, you've got one corner that's the same, right? Or sorry, four corners that are identical. So if I take the first one of the corners and I draw it, I could mirror it. Up once, over, and I'm done. And that's something I'm going to show you really quickly. All right? So here we go. That is what I'm going to be drawing. So I want to make sure I got my measurements right, radiuses, and stuff. So I'm going to start with a circle. And I can either use the menu on the side or type circle. And I know it's at 2, comma 2 is the center of the circle. Right? Is it a radius or diameter? Well, if I looked over there, it's a radius of 0.71 is the outside. So R for radius, 0.71. There's my first one. Now, because I've set up snap, watch this. When I go anywhere close to the center, oops, that's a Y. I had to type circle first. Okay. If I go anywhere towards the center, it will automatically pick the center. I hit the mouse button, and away it goes. Now, the next one is diameter. It's diameter of 0.5. There's my next circle. Next is a line. So I type in line. And the line, when I go back to here, you can see it starts right here in the center of the circle, and it goes up here and it goes this way. Now this line from center to center over here on the right is four inches. And from center to center down below is seven inches. So if I come over here and I type, I do my line, I grab it here and I go up and I'm gonna, I can guess it with the mouse 
right? And if you look down below, you can actually see the, what it says for angle, and you can see the length. I can hit over in the bottom right, it says ortho here. If I click ortho, it will only let me draw 0 degrees, 90, 180, or 270, right? And again, I can sit there and kind of guess it. Geez, it's not really, oh, there's length. OK, I'll grab that one as 2. Hit escape, get rid of it. Hit the space bar, the command comes back, grab here. The other way I can do is go at 3.5 at an angle of 0. And there's my other half. Now, if I go back to the drawing, it's half an inch between here and here, the inside box. So what command am I going to use? Offset. So offset. And again, read what it says down the bottom here. It says distance, 0.5. Select entity. I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to go this way. Right? Then I'm going to go here, select entity, and go that way. Hit escape. I'm out of the command. Now what? I've got to get rid of some parts. What command can I use? Trim or fill it. So I'm going to use trim. And the, the, now there's quick ways of doing this. Right? So I don't want this inside of the circle here. It's all going to be gone. So if I hit the outside of the circle and I right mouse click, and then I hit the inside of the circle, whoops, it's like I need to trim. Oh, I won't do it. I just messed up my demo. So trim. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start with this one. Right mouse click, or once I select it, come on, select it. Right mouse click, and I'm going to trim that one. Then select any to trim, take that one. Ah, I knew I was going to goof, guys. Trim. So, pick that one, right mouse click, and that's gone, right? Well, you, you can, you can also use fillet too. I'm kind of going a little slower here. So I'm going to take this one, right mouse click, hit trim, that one goes, right? Now, type trim again, oops, trim is already there, right? Select this object, select that object, come on, it doesn't want to work, hang on, trim again, select this guy, right mouse click, trim that away, zoom, zoom, window. And here goes my complete demo, and I practiced it this morning. Trim. I'm going to take the circle. Right mouse click. Trim this one out. Trim that one out. Hit escape. Now I can type trim. And I take this one here, this one here, right mouse click, and I can trim that part out. Why is it not trimming out? There we go. And take that part out. There we go. Okay. Zoom, all. So now I have that. Now, in the corner here, there's a radius of 0 0.035. Or 0.35. So type in fillet. Radius, 0.35. And I grab this one and that one. Okay. And I should be able to write most of space bar. Click that one, click that one. And that should not have done that. Zoom, window. And let me just go trim again. And I'm going to take this one right here. Get rid of that one. And trim again. Keep that one right there. And get rid of that one. Whoops. There we go. OK, so there's my quarter of my drawing. Now I just do mirror. So M I R R R R. There's my mirror. Select the entity to mirror. I highlight the whole thing. Okay. Right mouse click. It says start of mirror line. I'm going to grab the endpoint here, and then I'll just flip it. Hit enter or hit the mouse button. Down the bottom, read it. Delete the original entity. No. It's there. Highlight the whole thing again. All right. Mirror. Start of the mirror line. Right here. And like that, do you want to delete it? No, and I'm done. That is a lot quicker than trying to go through and do each corner and try and do all the, the trims and the breaks and the stuff, right? But you have to understand that once you figure out, or once you see an object that you got to draw, what's the easiest way to do it? And that is the point of these lessons right now, and these last or these couple assignments. The easiest way to do it, and you got to think it out. So that's basically the demo just on mirroring, right? And why I want you to do it that way.
To add dimensions, I would just go up to dimension. And let's say it's just a linear dimension. And I would grab the center of this. I grab the center of that. And I can go up like that. Now, you notice that they're all the same color. You set up a drawing template that's got a whole bunch of different layers. Now, if I screw up and I don't have them on the right layers, you don't start over. Right? I can simply take this one and say, well, that's already on the dimension layer. Right? The other ones aren't. So I'm just going to make it easy. I'm just going to delete this one so I can do this quicker. I can just highlight the entire object. I can go to here. And this is an object. So it's object lines. And as soon as I click somewhere, now it's black. Right? Now I've got dimension lines still on. So now I can go back to dimensions, linear. And because I only did one dimension, it's a lot quicker just to you know, highlight everything and go from there. Right? There's my dimension. Now, if you notice the size of this, right? when you go and print it out, you want to be able to read the dimensions. If you didn't set up the template correctly, this dimension might be huge, or it might be really tiny. Because there are certain settings in the program that you have to scale. If this paper was, you know, or you were drawing this to real size, and this object here was 10 feet across, and then you scaled it down when you printed it out, the font might be so tiny you can't read it. And that's why there's a scaling in that. And that's why the templates come in, right? To set it up correctly. So the template that you guys have set up is basically set for the next three drawings. You don't need to change anything else. But it's important to understand the template getting set up correctly. When you're finished this, it will be A, printed out. B, as soon as I get all your names put in on the network, you will save it to a location on the network where I'm going to look at it. Matter of fact, I might just come around and look on your screen and mark it right on the spot that I want to see all the dimensions in magenta. I want to see the object in black. I want to see the text down here in blue. Again, if one of those is not on the right layer, I will take a mark off because you're trying to make it look identical to the final product. And when I click on this and I scroll down, there's the final product. And all the colors are right. That is blue in there. Pardon me? Uh, part of the assignment is to actually come up with a drawing border that has some type of logo in there. Mine just happens to be a fish. I did a wolf. And someone did a wolf. Now, the question I have is, it's pink here, or it's uh, magenta there because it was on that layer. If I switch it back to border layer, right? Now I've got the right color. Although it looks green. So, questions? No. You're on your own for the rest of the period. Work hard, learn, and when you need help, come ask me.